The story so far. A small while back, I helped an up-and-coming pony reviewer compose a song that she was then hoping to have animated for a... <laughs> no, wait, stop. To truly understand, you're gonna have to come back a little further. A million years ago, a few members of an adult fandom surrounding a certain cartoon show for children noticed that their own very existence was somewhat interesting. Filled with love, tolerance, and more than a smattering of the not gays, this clique of cool cats collected some crowdfunding to make a documentary about it all. The centerpiece of which would be a certain world-renowned personality and voice actor from the TV show itself. Things seemed to be squeaking along unrogered right up until launch when, much like in Anna's 90th, the rogering went viral. Yeah, you see, by and large, it turns out most people interested in seeing a fan-made movie about bronies had already paid up front. By a wide margin, anyone beyond that just pirated it. This came as a blow to everyone involved, and none more so than everyone's favorite voice actor who voiced his emotions somewhat crestfallen. Say it ain't so, Chief. Bronies? The nicest, sharingest, caringest fandom in the world? Pirates? How could you? How could you do this to this beautiful man? You gonna stand for this? Well, no, said one brassy lady from the cotton belt. Yes, deep within the US of A, a certain young YouTuber assembled herself a team of overworked, underpaid artists to square the ledger. And oh my good granny's glittery garters. This is where we began. A small while back, yours truly helped an up-and-coming pony reviewer compose a song that she was then hoping to have animated for a... Video tribute to one John Delancey. Welcome to the Hatter's party. We serve a delicious storm. The video turned out to be a hodgepodge of charming elements, including analysis, funny convention anecdotes, salutations from fans, and of course, one great big musical cartoon to mirror the one in the documentary. And for what it was, it did really rather well. If we could... Ugh, who's this pretentious git? I took it all back, it's a piece of garbage. But, popular garbage, at least it was. At the time of writing, this show's now gone, possibly forever. And why? Well, it seems to be the will of the people, I guess. Which people? Oh no. Oh no! Yeah, I remember all those overworked, underpaid people from two paragraphs ago? Yeah, well, that. And it seems some very angry chickens are coming home to roost. Oh, honey, bunny, bunch, and boo. Where'd you go and honey do? Right now there's a terrifying lynch mob at the gates and BURN HER! BURN HER! Ah, and a clarion call for the truth. <laughs> oh, really? You want the truth? You know the truth. And if not, here's where you can go get your daily dose. Mmm, delicious drama. Gobble it up. Yum yum. I love all this TMZ stuff! Really? TMZ? TMZ! We're cool! Really? We're cool! Yeah, that's nice for you, honey bunny. But if you're anything like the rest of us, you too might just be sat there wondering what the flying freedom fridge does any of this have to do with the aforementioned cartoon? Ah, oh, yes. Well, now we're hunting a Mewtwo, eh? Of the many accusations flying around right now, a big one, a really, really, no, no, really properly big one, is that this animation seems to have been made with some illicit materials. Oh yes, you see, some say that sometime, back in the primordial year of 2013, someone deep within the fetid fundament of DHX Media did the dastardly. Leaked official show assets to the public. Backing a dump truck full of proprietary art into the town square and shouting, Have ye at it! <laughs> oh, how at it the kids did have ye. It was a free-for-all. The pervading wisdom at the time being, oh, this is something they do, right? DHX is cool. And it took a whole year before alarm bells started ringing. All of a sudden, it seemed a spate of copyright claims and even an official takedown or two were introduced over at everyone's favorite public platform, .com. This quickly led some to hypothesize that perhaps the corporation was flailing the YouTube ban hammer randomly, smashing even unrelated videos in an attempt to plug the leak. By then, for KP and crew, it was all too late. The choice is made. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa. Thus, the whole globe got to goggle the gooey irony of watching a video made with leaked intellectual property decry the sins of piracy. Oh. Oh, the delicious double standard. Mmm, num num. Jump in, the chocolate sauce! And add all of this to the big pile of BURN! Right, 
Now, this is where things get interesting. With a couple of large, dangly pink points you might find valuable. Firstly, it's worthwhile mentioning here that KP and crew never kept any of this a secret. From what I can tell, the handling of DHX's junk was known to everyone from the get-go. Thus, Evil Incorporated had themselves two full years to give a damn and oof. Just listen to that fuss. Secondly, and I really didn't think I'd need to ask this, but does anyone actually think that downloading and watching a commercial movie online, when you can pay for it and keep everyone happy, really is the same thing as copying elements of someone else's intellectual property to create transformative art? And in this case, not-for-profit art that doesn't affect anyone's bottom line? Huh. Tell you what, we'll put a pin in that one. The director herself has since mentioned, at least quietly, that ultimately it wasn't a good idea and, quote, we didn't know any better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Speak for yourself, honey bunch. Because I still don't know any better. And maybe you cool cats can explain it to me. You want to know the difference between using ready-made assets and lovingly hand-crafting your own? 20 to 40 hours. For fan art. Yeah, bugger that. Just use the assets. What's the beef? Using actual media created by the show staff is a massive legal problem. Definitely not covered by usual fair use law. What? DHX assets are highly illegal. Even if you don't make money from them. You what? We want you to delete the Let's Go and Meet John Delancey video off of YouTube. We are very aware that you only privatized it on your channel. This is something that can be easily undone once everything has died down. Permanent deletion will ensure that you, your team, and the fandom are protected by possible legal actions from Hasbro Incorporated and DHX Media Limited. The fact that you use their Macromedia Flash Puppets is highly illegal in the United States. It voids all copyright law, including Appendix C, the Copyright Royalty and Distribution Reform Act of 2004, and Appendix J, Title 44 Public Printing and Documents U.S. Code. To simplify, they state, stealing a company's assets or supplies, and then used without consent or license from the original company, organization, or copyright owner, is illegal. We don't want this to happen to anyone, so for the sake of everyone that worked on the project, and yourself, please just delete it. Holy dooly. That's a tight lid on a big jar of pickles. Yikes! I suppose the moral here is that if you want to work on a public platform that has anything to do with copyright law, you better know your facts. Right. So, what was that law you mentioned? Uh, you used flash puppets, and that's highly illegal. It voids all copyright law. Oh, no, darling. An unelected citizen can't void any law. Would that it were true. I think you meant to say violated. I'll just go ahead and redact that for you. There we are. Continue. Uh, it violates Appendix C, the Copyright Royalty and Distribution- Ah, that's right. So, what's the Copyright Royalty and Distribution Reform Act of 2004? To the Google-mobile! Ah, bonza. Let's read this pig. Copyright and blah 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 2004. Section 1. Short title. This act may be cited as the Copyright Royalty and Distribution Reform Act of 2004. You don't say. Except as otherwise expressly provided, wherever and in this act an amendment or repeal is expressed in terms of an amendment to or repeal of a section or other provision, the references shall be considered to be made to a section or other provision of Title 17 United States Code. Oh, uh, it's not all like this, is it? Cheer up, Anthony! We believe in you! You could read the phone book and it would be interesting. Aww. Right. Well. I don't have any phone books handy, but I do have the Copyright Royalty and Distribution Reform Act of 2004. Challenge accepted. One, in general, subject to paragraphs two and three, the amendments made by this act shall two, not certain be royalty rate proceedings, proceedings and petition and filed or voluntary one, the amendments, amendments made by this three, act shall pending not be provided in not outstanding paragraph one, any proceedings to establish or adjust rates and terms for the standard term licenses of the Congress section one and fourteen for the effective date twelve e of Title seventeen United States Code for a statutory period, any proceedings so terminated shall be null and void. In such cases, the copyright royalty judge is made to carry out the proceeding in accordance with the regulations of the code shall be available to the extent necessary to carry out this section. 
Okay, so what we've got here is a list of amendments to something called Title 17 United States Code. Now, since it only points out changes to that main body of legal code, it's not practicably possible to isolate any laws pertaining to fair use. Unless one were willing to find the main body of law to which it relates and then sort of flip back and forth between the two comparing references. Well, all right, let's do that. Title 17, United States Code. Ah, Google tells me this is about copyright law. Frickin' finally. Wow, the full enchilada. 1,300 pages. I don't have to read all of this, do I? Oh, that's right, no. I guess just the bits mentioned in the 2004 Reform Act. Hmm. -hmm. So, let's go through every, every single, single one of them. Section 802D pertains entirely to judgeships, vacancies, or incapacitations. Hmm, yeah, that can't be it. 801A, judges and appointments. Uh, no. 803B6, judges regulations, regulations and requirements. Hmm, seems like all of the 800s are about what judges are supposed to do when making rulings. Ah, here we go. 119C, royalty determination for TV satellite signals. What? 114F2, ooh, this is about sound recordings. Next. 112E is ephemeral sound recordings. Ooh, hocus pocus, hairy fairy. Who are you calling a fairy? No, no, as in like furry, as in ephemeral, like a fable, like a legend, you know, like sort of doesn't it doesn't matter. 114D1C4 knocking at your door. That's more sound recordings for business this time. 804B2, there's them judges again. B2, 3A, 803B1A, and C1 for judges instituting proceedings, judges procedures and petitions, and judges determination timing. Excuse me, what's all this got to do with art assets? The last reference that might be of some use to us is something called 17 U.S.C. 114 Note Public Law 107-321. This was a trick to find, but I eventually did, and I'll link it to you in the description in case you want to check my work. Because I'm not sure if you've had the sheer joy of pouring through what turns out to be six pages of officiously written United States Congressional House resolutions, the most salient section of which, in the end, turns out to be provisions for internet people. Wait for it. Paying for music. <laughs> Look, it might just be me. It's entirely my fault, I can't find anything and whatever. But you know what, that's the danger when linking us to a list of amendments to a body of law instead of to the actual law itself. Which makes me wonder, if you could find a law being stepped on, then why don't you just link us to that? Did you even look for a f- oh. That's right, there's more. You violated all copyright law, including Appendix C, the Copyright Royalty and Distribution Reform Act, and Appendix J, Title 44, Public Printing and Documents, U.S. Code. Oh, no. Oh, no! Not Appendix J! What the fudge is Appendix J? And more importantly, why would this Dropbox document let me copy and paste properly? That's the real crime. Oh, you're gonna make me fill in the thing. Oh, here we go. Oh, merciful mic, it's only one page. Appendix J, Title 44, Public Printing and Documents, U.S. Code. Chapter 21, National Archives and Records Administration, Limitation on Liability. When letters and other intellectual productions, exclusive of patented material, etc., come into the custody or possession of the archivist, the United States or its agents are not liable for infringement of copyright or analogous rights arising out of the use of materials for display, inspection, research, reproduction, or other purposes. This is immunity for government employees working in the National Archives? <laughs> nice try! You jackasses got me pouring through ream after ream of the world's densest legal mumbo jumbo just to end with this. This nonsense gave me a migraine! I legit went blind from this garbage. Oh, it's a fact. Truth hurts. Did you really think no one would check? Why well, do you work for iTunes? I guess never underestimate the power of too long didn't read. Can I get paid now, Rachel? For those playing at home, the TLDR is that this is 
utter nonsense. Especially this bit. Cover your assets, kids. We don't want to upset them DC librarians. <laughs> oh, why do I care so much? Well, it might be because of this chronic misinformation and fear-mongering, which is really taking a toll on the kids. Like, I got it. We're all furious with KP. <laughs> but is this really helpful? I appreciate this apparent gesture of concern here. Thank you. It's very sweet. Though speaking as one of the overworked, perpetually underappreciated collaborators, I'd just as soon keep the dang video up, thank you. Thank you. If there's a problem that exists between Hasbro Corporation and the lady girl who controls the channel, we're not in any danger. And you're quite welcome to try and prove me wrong, and please, if you think you can find a single law that this cartoon is in jeopardy of breaking, then I'll direct you to these people so that you can ask them why they feel the need to bend the truth. Hmm, so maybe this has a little less to do with liberty, a little more to do with jabbing a woman right where it hurts. In the most valued and personal project she's ever produced. Great! But I didn't spend hours rewriting songs and coaching people to sing. Yeah, that was me. Aren't I amazing? And all, yes, unpaid just to have my and everyone else's hard work <laughs> into the ether. And for what? Hate's sake? Or is it really because everyone's afraid? Ah, oh, darling, America. O oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stern impassioned stress a thoroughfare of freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self control, thy liberty in law. Or, you know, whatever floats your boat. Now, yeah, we've been confessing each other's sins for a while now. I suppose it's time to come clean on a few of my own. Certainly, a lot of heartache could have been avoided if her crew had just created their own assets in making this show. So, did you ever wonder why KP didn't insist they do just that? I mean, what was it to her? She wasn't going to be doing the work. And yet, when it all blew up in her face, she never threw anyone under the bus for it. As far as I know. In fact, in time, this woman bestrode the internet alone to take responsibility. And I respect that. When the rest of the world giggles and wonder at why she chose to use the damned assets in the first place. Why? Because I told her to. It's true, emboldened by the spirits of I don't care, guess who was the proudest of pilfered pony picture promoters? I think KP was in the call when I compellingly argued for the pitiless duplication of every asset they could find. Oh sure, you could say that it's ultimately the lady's production and her call. Or you might argue that her animation team could have said, no, bugger off Anthony, that's a terrible idea. But come on, can you really blame them? I've been known to be pretty persuasive. And completely unrepentant. The whole world is wrong, you see. Wrong and stupid and misinformed and stupid and wrong. And here's how. Alright, now sit down, darling. We don't want you hurting yourself. You alright? Good. I've been using the assets from the very start. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> yes, this too is true. My little Cosmologico scene? He's an Applejack recolor. Say what? That's why he's got a girly rump. Like me. <laughs> Not so fast, oh! Anthony. Scribbles! What are you doing here? I'm here to set the record straight, dude. You are? Well, that's jolly nice. Please, have at it. Your character is not just a recolor. No, 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 no. You're a hybrid. Small part show assets, big part original art. I see. You drew many of your own faces. That's why you look so funny from the side. Hey! Just telling him the truth, brah. Well, thank you, dear. Now, full disclosure, you didn't have anything to do with this, did you? <laughs> nope. You're on your own, buddy. Well, cheers anyway. 
Try not to nuke your channel. No promises. And now you want to hear the shocking twist? Not only is the corporation cool with us, monetizing my shows, etc., but they actively and consciously use these videos to advertise... My Little Pony. So when some suggest that using actual material created by the show staff is a massive legal problem, definitely not covered by usual fair use law, I'm not certain which hole they're talking out of. Is this a piracy thing? We afraid of being considered pirates now? Look, I'll agree, piracy is an issue and ought to be talked about, because a lot of people feel very strongly about it. Some so strongly, in fact, that they wish all forms of unlicensed media be banned from public sites like YouTube. And they'll try their darndest to make that happen. Media such as, say, fully rendered TV show clips containing, by the way, not just show assets, but animation cycles, backgrounds, full voice acting and score, which is then incorporated by talented artists into reviews, news reports, fan-made music videos and mashups, like this Friendship is Witchcraft show, all of it, some say, should be banned for breach of copyright. And you know those people. We call them greedy, nearsighted corporations, before crying loudly about fair use. Where's the fair use? Where's the fair use? Where's the fair use? Where's the fair use? Oh, we like fair use. Where's the fair use? Where's the fair use? Where is the fair use? Isn't it a clip of a fully produced TV show or movie for review purposes? A clip such as this, which contains, again, not just show assets, but fully rendered animation cycles, background elements, voice acting and all that. It's fair use, right? But this isn't. Okay, well, would it be all right with you if I cut out a section of this show footage and stuck the assets I want into an original setting? Taken from a fair use clip, remember? No? Okay, well, what if I use the show as a reference to meticulously spend the 20 to 40 hours it takes to make some brand new proprietary assets as so many have done and are doing to avoid the legal trouble? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that'll work out just fine! No? Still no good? Well, how about I take the leaked assets and instead of just hitting Control v to make my fan art, I painstakingly trace every little line to reconstruct a near as makes no difference and functionally identical set of rigs so similar that you didn't even notice which is which, and sits in my library right alongside the never to be used again originals to vouchsafe the confidence that these new images, congealed from my own tears, sweat and elbow grease, are alright to use because, well now they most definitely aren't created by anyone else. I'm technically correct. The best kind of correct. Now for all of you not distracted by your Pokemons, of course the long, boring, bureaucratic official term for all of this is for buck fuck ridiculous! This, naturally, is the singular example of anything relative I can find coming close to legal trouble. Jan Animation's amazing Button Mesh Adventures cartoon. Mr. Jan's odyssey into the world of intellectual property theft is a bit beyond the scope of this video, but it's at least worth pointing out that he never used the assets. Uh-huh. He really is just so talented. And virally ought to be a clue that whatever irked the corporation here must run a little deeper than simple piracy. Probably has a little more to do with the company's control over its money-making ideas, and a lot less to do with leaked assets. I personally think they could have handled things a bit better. Can we see the elephant? We'll pay you money! For the ninth time, no! Wait a minute. This gives me an idea. Mm. Here's a better sign, Dad. I don't have time to read it. Just give me the gist of it, son. And as for their leaked assets... Kindly, kind sir, kindly find me one single example of someone getting in official hot water over the use of these assets. And don't talk to me about someone who was also uploading a whole season's worth of shows or whatever, no. I mean solely and specifically because of the use of the assets. Produce them for me, and then I will emphatically remind you of a few salient points, not least of which being that just because a big corporation squashes you on YouTube doesn't mean they're right. Doesn't make it legal. My name is Joshua Burner, and YouTube Where's the fair use?
Where's the- you know what, that's just an awesome question. Where's the f let's find out! Now, my best Google foo very quickly leads me to the website of Stanford University and a comprehensive article on fair use by attorney Rich Stem. In his words, which for no reason I will now read to you in the voice of Crichton from Red Dwarf, Unfortunately, the only way to get a definitive answer on whether a particular use is a fair use is to have it resolved in federal court. Judges use four factors to resolve fair use disputes as discussed in detail below. It's important to understand that these factors are only guidelines that courts are free to adapt to particular situations on a case-by-case -case basis. In other words, a judge has a great deal of freedom when making a fair use determination, so the outcome in any given case can be hard to predict. Now it's possible I'm mistaken, but according to the tastiest legal brains on earth, this situation's unresolved. Sadly, fair use is not a collection of laws governing every area of art. It's a legal defense one can employ when someone makes a civil claim against them in court. And only then is coverage determined by the presiding judge. And yet, but no one has provided a single example of that happening. So when some people insubstantially conjecture that the use of these assets is highly friggin' illegal, it's not true. At the very worst, it seems you might be technically at risk of being hauled before a judge. Indeed, I might be technically at risk of being hauled before a judge, but you know what? Bring it on! Let's have this out. We're really not supposed to be afraid of this sort of thing. And until that time, such as when Hasbro decides it wants to stop making money out of me and actually bother to spend some cash dragging me into court, I'll keep my corporate approved asset riddled cartoons right where they are. Thank you very much. The last people on earth who might have a legitimate grievance with me, aside from the soul-sucking, lauren-firing, jan-crushing, bay-approving corporation that started this mess, might be the talented contractors they hired to create these assets in the first place. Now to these tireless virtuosos working in gloryless anonymity and to whom we all owe so much, I say thank you. If any of you wonderful people feel hardly done by, well, then I apologize. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have that for the world. If you want, do get in contact with me and send all your ire this way. And for everyone else who thinks they have an opinion on the legality or morality of using their leaked assets to make fan art, you're welcome. Now well, maybe it's time to try and put the rest of these toys back in their box. Dear Rachel, tempestuous, ambitious, go-getter. KP. A military term, short for kitchen patrol. If you're watching this page and aren't one of the poor souls still holding up for bunny cartoons, then chances are you're a fan of that marvelous show called My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. A fun program about colourful horsey people learning and loving and sharing and caring and all that good time guff, around which has sprung possibly the nicest worldwide fandom ever. Good people who like this show, an episode of which I seem to remember wherein three little filly friends, calling themselves the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and finding themselves on a quest to discover their life's raison, take jobs reporting for a school newspaper. They don't have much luck until they start filling a gossip column, for which they eventually spread dirt on everyone they know. Little do they realize how badly it's affecting their reputation, until suddenly they find themselves ostracized by everyone. It gets so bad, even the would-be princess of friendship gives them a cold shoulder. Forced to their lowest point, in what is possibly the saddest moment in the whole series, the three finally come to terms with what they've become, and immediately set about making heartfelt amends for the callous disregard for other people's feelings on their rompus stomp to success. And it works out. It's fine. Everyone forgives them, and they eventually earn every pony's trust back. It's a bitter little episode, but with a sweet moral. One that I'd hope wouldn't be lost on bronies. Those magnificent misfit sweethearts who seem to fit better in the world of colorful cartoon horses, who adopted for themselves that masterful motto. What was it again? You know the one I mean. Ah, yes, there it is. Hey, I see you. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Burn in hell forever! <laughs>
My name is Joshua Berner, and that is just shameful.